Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Sula Arts School. But here for Teaching in Room 9, all of my lessons focus on math for second graders. But everyone's always encouraged to join. Welcome back friends, I hope you're having a really good week. And I am really grateful that you are here with me and taking time out of your day for us to do some learning here together. It really warms my heart so much and I am so happy to be here with you. All right, friends, so let's go ahead and jump right into our mindful minute exercise for today. So we always start with a little mindful breathing, taking those deep breaths, slowing our body and our breathing down, really being aware of our five senses so that we can be very present in the moment. Then I know that you will feel much more recentered, focused, and ready to listen and to learn here together today. Uh, so we'll start with some deep breaths and then I will walk you through our Halloween yoga poses for today. All right, friends, I'd like you to go ahead and stand or sit up nice and straight. If you are standing, your feet are going to be about hip width apart, feet flat, firm on the ground, pointing forward. Uh, kind of put your shoulders back and down so that your chest is out nice and big and proud. So that way you open up your um, lungs and your airways to have some really good deep breaths. We'll breathe in through our nose, counting to three, and out through our mouth, counting to three. Okay, breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. Nice job, friends. Keep taking those deep breaths in and out. Feel how your lungs fill with air. Your chest begins to rise. As you breathe out, you feel your chest go back down as that air leaves your lungs. We're going to start by uh, doing our Halloween yoga pose for Witch on a Broom. So you are going to stand tall in mountain pose with your feet, again, hip width apart. So if you're not standing, go ahead and stand now. And you are going to breathe in. And as you exhale, you are going to bend your knees and pretend you are riding a broom like a witch, just going into chair pose. Okay, friends, here, I'll maybe do it from the side. Breathe in through your nose. Arms high above your head and out through your mouth as you sit back on your broom. Pretend that you are flying high in the sky on your witch's broom. Nice job. Okay, we're gonna go into our next one here. This one is bat pose. So you are going to stand from mountain pose that you are just in. And you're going to bend your upper body and reach for your toes slowly. So we'll breathe in, bringing our arms up, opening our airways, and then we will slowly breathe out and you're going to slowly come down and go into what I call ragdoll pose, uh, where you're just sort of hanging there, just like a bat would hang. Okay, so breathe in through your nose. Arms up, 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 high above your head. Okay, and breathe out as you slowly bend your body in half. And go all the way down as much as you can. Let gravity do its job, kind of helping to pull and stretch those muscles as you hang there, ragdoll pose, just like a bat would hang from a tree. And sometimes when I'm in ragdoll pose, I like to kind of just gently sway back and forth. Maybe there's a nice breeze and your uh, bat is kind of swinging back and forth. Okay. And when you are ready, you may slowly come back up. Nice job, my little spooky bats. All right, we're going into our last pose, friends. This is our spider pose, where you are going to make a tabletop with your body. So you're going to come to sitting with your palms flat behind you and the soles of your feet flat in front of you. 
and then you're going to lift your bottom to create a table. So basically you're gonna be on your knees, your hands are flat, and your back is going to basically be that tabletop. Uh, and just pretend like you are about to start walking slowly like a spider. Okay, so breathe in through your nose in your tabletop position and out through your mouth. Okay, and when you are ready, my little spiders, you can crawl your way back up to a standing position. Nice job, friends. I hope that you're enjoying our Halloween yoga we've been doing together this week. Uh, you did amazing. We're going to go ahead and jump right in to our learning goal. So again, our learning goals this week our I can count by ones, fives, and tens, starting at any number. So we've also been working with I can add or subtract and explain our thinking. We always wanna get in that habit to make sure, maybe you understand how to do the skill, but if you don't know how you're able to explain your thinking, then you wanna make sure that you ask for help or keep practicing and trying until that little light bulb clicks in your brain. And then you know, okay, I definitely understand this and I can explain my thinking to someone else because being able to understand the thought process that goes behind being able to solve different problems in math is very important in order for us to move on to a new skill that builds on that skill that we had just learned. So again, we've been working with number lines. Uh, we were working with number lines last week and I sort of introduced how when we make jumps of 10, there's, those are those bigger jumps and we use those big jumps and then our little jumps in order for us to solve an addition or subtraction problem. A lot of these numbers, we are not starting at one on our number line. So we're getting really good at being able to start at any number and jump up by fives, tens, or ones in order for us to be able to solve. So we'll be working on that together again today. I'm gonna go ahead and swing you guys around this way so you can see my chart. We can work through it here together. All right, friends. So I'm sure you've noticed that now there are less papers that are blocking off some of our uh, sections. So let's just briefly review what we learned yesterday. Again, we're doing addition and subtraction using open number lines. That open is just saying that we don't always have to make every single little tick mark as we go. If we're making our big jumps, like yesterday, we focused on making jumps of 10 and then making our jumps of one, both for addition and subtraction. We don't have to write out every single little tick mark in there. That we can just do our jumps of 10 first and then make those smaller jumps of one in order for us to be able to solve. So that's what we focused on yesterday. If we were doing an addition problem, we looked at our second number, our add end, and we looked at it and broke it into our tens and our ones. So here for 49 plus 32, we took that 32 add end and we noticed that there were three tens and two ones. So first we would make our jumps of 10, then our ones. So we started at 49 and jumped up three tens, 10 to 59, 10 again to 69, and 10 again to 79. Now we've done these three here. Now we just have to do those two ones. So from 79, we jumped up one, two to 81, and we were able to solve. And then we did that exact same process or strategy when we were working with our subtraction problem. So we did 64 minus 24, and we broke apart our second number into tens and ones. 24 is broken down into two tens and four ones. So we started at 64, we jump back our two tens, 54, 44, now our two is done. Now we just need to do those four ones. So from 44, we jump back one, two, three, four times to get our difference of 40. So 40 was our answer there. So let's go ahead and jump into our new addition and subtraction strategy that we're going to use today. So again, just like it was yesterday, our addition and our subtraction are essentially the same strategy. We're just applying it to either addition or subtraction. So let's take a look. So here it says, add a friendly number, then 
compensate. So we'll review those vocab words again here. We touched on them a little bit yesterday, but again, a friendly number is a nice, clean number. So examples of a friendly number might be 10, 20, 30, or even sometimes using those fives, 15, 25, 35. Not friendly numbers would be like 13 or 17 or 29. Okay, we want to use a friendly number. And then compensate. Compensate again just means that once we use that friendly number to make our jumps, then we will compensate or go back to or go ahead to where we need to be for that number. So it's sort of like making up that difference. So let's take a look here and hopefully that'll start making more sense. 63 plus 29. So we start at 63. Now 29, I'm noticing that is so close to 30, right? 29, not a friendly number. 30 definitely is. So I started at 63 and I kind of used my 29 and I made it 30 to make a friendly number. So I went up 10 or three jumps of 10. So 63, one jump of 10 is 73. Another jump of 10 is 83. And my third jump of 10 was 93. But now again, it's not 30, it's 29. So, but I know that 29 is only one number less than 30. So I went in my three jumps of 10 up to 30, which gave me 93. But in order to compensate or make it up, make up that difference, I went back, whoop, one little ribbit jump backwards to 92. And that is my answer. So I just turned 29 into a friendly addend of 30, but I knew that it was only one last. So once I made those three jumps of 10, I just went back one to compensate and make the number 29 instead of 30. All right, so let's go ahead and look at that for subtraction too. Again, we're gonna use that same strategy. So over here, subtract a friendly number, then compensate. So in green here, it says 55 minus 19. Hmm, what number is 19 so close to? If you said 20, you are absolutely right. 19 is just one less than 20. So we start at 55 and we make two jumps of 10 backwards for that friendly number of 20 and then we'll compensate. So 55, I jump back 10 to 45 and then I jump back 10 again to 35. But I'm not taking away 20, I'm only taking away 19. So I have to jump up one to make it 19. So my answer is 36. Again, let's touch on some of these vocab words and we'll practice the skill even more. So our vocab words are addend. Again, addend is the number that you're adding to another number in order to find the sum or the total. So like 49 or 32, those are your two addends. Um, 63 and 29, those are your two addends and you put them together to find your sum or your total compensate and friendly number. So that's the skill or strategy that we're using today in order to solve. So a friendly number would be a nice, even clean number like 20 or 30 or 40. And then we compensate or make up that difference. So here we noticed our add in 29 was so close to 30, it's just one less. So we made 30 jumps or three jumps of 10 and then went back one for 29. Then we did the same thing with subtraction. We noticed that the number we're taking away, 19, is so close to 20. So we went 55 and made two jumps of 10 backwards for 20. And then we compensated by jumping up one because it's 19 and not 20 that we were taking away. So that's compensate is making up the difference. Friendly numbers are those nice even clean numbers for us to make our jumps from that sometimes helps us or makes sense in our brain. And then again, combine, putting our two add-ins together or break apart would be taking um, either our add-in or the number we are subtracting and breaking it down either into tens and ones.
All right, we'll go over that vocab again each day this week, but let's practice our skill for today. Again, that friendly number and then compensate. So scooch you this way so you guys can see really nice and clear. Again, in yellow, I've written our skill we're using to practice together today. Friendly number, then we compensate. And again, my um, addition jumps are gonna be in orange and my subtraction jumps are gonna be in green. So that is written right there for you so it makes it nice and easy peasy for you guys to be able to see and understand. So the first one we're going to do today in order to practice this friendly number then compensate skill is 22 plus 39 equals what? Okay, so I'm gonna look at my add end of 39. What number is 39 so close to? How can I turn that into a friendly number? If you said 40, you are amazing, absolutely right. If not, no worries, we're gonna stretch our brains here together and practice. So 22 is where we're gonna start. This is my 22 right here. I've got my orange for my addition jumps. And I'm gonna pretend that 39 is my friendly number of 40. So I'm going to make four jumps of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40. So 22, rivet to 32, that's our first 10. Rivet to 42, that's our second 10. Rivet to 52, that's our third 10. Just one more, 52 to 62, ribbit is our last 10. We did 10, 20, 30, 40 jumps. And now I have landed at 62, but our number wasn't 40, right? We just made it or turned it into a friendly number. So 39 is one less than 40. So I made 40 jumps to land at 62. So now I need to compensate and make up that difference and jump back one little baby ribbit, ribbit. And that gave me 61. Okay, so I jumped back. And so now I know that 39 plus 22 is 61. I turned my 39 addend into a friendly number and then I compensated by making one hop back. All right, let's do another problem in addition, and then we'll go through these same um, equations, but using the same strategy for subtraction. All right, our next one we are going to do is 35 plus 39. 35 plus 39 equals what? Now, I'm gonna look at my addend again. I happen to choose the same number. Okay, what is our addend so close to? Yes, again, it is so close to 40. So we are going to turn 39 into that friendly number of 40. So I'm gonna start at 35, which is right here. And I'm going to again make uh, four jumps of 10 to do that 40. So I went from 35, ribbit, to 45, there's my first 10, 45, ribbit to 55, that's my second 10, ribbit to 65 is my third 10, one more, ribbit to 75, I've now done 40, but again, we know that 39 is not the same as 40, it's one less. So I landed at 75, but now I have to compensate and make one little baby rivet, rivet, <laughs> back to 74. And that gives us our answer. So 39 plus 35 is 74. All right, now let's try the same strategy with the same problem, but this time we're going to use subtraction. So I gotta use my green now. Okay, so let's do 61 minus 22. Okay, we'll see where we land. We know from fact families that this is where we will land, but let's go ahead and practice it out just so we can see and make sure that we are right. So 62 
I, or I'm sorry, 61 is where we're gonna start, which is this guy right here, right? We made that little rivet back to compensate. 61, now 61 minus 22. 22 is really very close to what number? Yeah, it's really very close to 20, right? So we're gonna turn it into a friendly number of 20. And then we'll have to compensate for those last two. But let's go ahead and start. 20 is how many tens? You got it. It is two tens. So 62, we're going to jump back, ribbit, 110 to 52, ribbit, another 10 to 42. And then now we compensate for those last two 42, 41. 41, or I'm sorry, 61 to six, or 51, then 51 to 41, 41 back two rivets to 39. Sorry about that, friends. 39, okay, as so we started at 61. So we started right here at 61, and then went back to 51, and again went back to 41. There we go. And then I made my two little rivets back to 39. Nice job, friends. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this top one so that we don't have too much information crowding our brains. And now we're gonna do this second one down here. 35 plus 39 is 74, but now we're gonna do it in subtraction. So 74, so this is here, 74, where we will start minus, let's do 39 equals what? And hopefully we know from our fact families that we will get this 35, but let's practice it. 39 again is so close to what friendly number? Yep, 40. So we're gonna start at 74 and we're gonna make four jumps of 10 back. So 74, 64, 54, 44, that's my 10, 20, 30, one more. So I'm at 44, 74, 64, 54, 44, 34, and then, so that's my 40, and then I have to compensate because it's not 40, it's actually 39. So I compensate back one little rivet and I get 35. All right, so again, we're just practicing using a friendly number. If you see an add-end or a number that you are taking away that is so close to a friendly number, you can make your hops of a friendly number and then compensate, if that makes sense, to your brain. All right, let's go ahead and practice one last one and we'll again kind of solve our, using our fact families. So say you are going on a nice, cool, brisk fall walk around your neighborhood. And you take notice of all the different Halloween decorations that you see. So you notice that you see lots of different spiders and webs as decorations, right? That's pretty common to see those like spooky spider webs and spiders. But you also see tons of ghosts hanging from trees. So we want to know how many all together. So if we had 24 spiders and spider webs that we saw decorations around our neighborhood. Plus, how many ghosts did we see? Because we know that we saw kind of a lot, but we do know that we had a total of 43 were all of the decorations that we counted going on a block around our neighborhood and in our community. So again, 24, these are our um, spiders and webs. We want to know ghosts. And we have this many decorations all together, 43. So I'm going to start at 24. And I know I need to get up to 43. So I'm going to make my jump of 10, 24 to 34, 34 to 44. Because that's a nice, easy, friendly number, 10, 
and another 10 is 20. But I know I, I don't have 44 that I counted in my neighborhood. I only have 43. So I made that nice, easy jump of my friendly number and of, of 20 here, but then I know it's not 44, it's only 43. So I compensate by making one little rivet back. So how many did I have? I had not 20, but 19 ghosts. All right, friends, let's go ahead and look at it here. I'm gonna erase this so you can see a little better. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna reverse it because that's how we do with our fact families. We know we're still gonna get that total of 43, okay? But maybe I know that I already have 19 ghosts. And I wanna know how many spiders and spider webs did I have? So 19, maybe I wanna turn this into a nice easy one of 20. So 20, I go from here, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and 40, one, two, three, I've got my three there, but I know that I didn't start at 19. I started at 20, so here's a compensate number, little one. Here's my compensate by three. 10, 20, one, two, three, four. 24 spiders and spider webs. All right, now let's go ahead and do our subtraction, friends. So 43 minus my 19 ghosts. So now how many spiders and spider webs? So I'm going to start at 43 right here. I know 19 is so close to my friendly number of 20. So I'm going to make two jumps of 10 back. 43, 33, 23. But again, it's not 20. It's 19. So I compensate by making one little jump back to 24. So I saw that this number I was taking away was so close to our friendly number of 20. So I made two jumps of 20 and then compensated by going up to 24 and made that little jump back up right here. And then same thing, if it was 43 minus 24, I would end up with 19. All right, 43 decorations all together in my neighborhood, 24 ghosts, or 24 spiders and spider webs, and 19 ghosts. You are amazing, friends. I hope this is starting to make sense to your brains. Thank you for all of your hard work. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.